Kouetio. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. L'audience est ouverte. For today proceeding, this is the first day of the document hearings for this week on the, the key documents by the parties. On the 31st May 2013, the trial chamber issued a memorandum to all parties of the case that the chamber will hold final key documents hearing that the parties of the chamber deemed most relevant to case 002-01, and that those documents have already been discussed before this chamber that is in reference to document E288. E288. Mr. Dutch Perry, could you report the attendance of the parties and Je individuals to today's proceeding? De faire son rapport sur la présence des parties et autres personnes. Dutch Perry. Le Mr. Greffier. President, Monsieur le Président, for the key documents hearing today, all parties to this case are present. Les parties sont présentes. It is noted that uh, Nguyen Chi is present in the holding Nguyen cell Chia downstairs. Se trouve dans la cellule temporaire du sous-sol. It is pursuant to the decision by the trial chamber Comme concerning par la chambre, compte tenu thank you. de son état de santé. President, thank you. Le Président, merci. So far, the prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers requested three days each for key documents presentation that they deemed uh, of the interest as an assist in order to assist the trial chamber in assessing the evidence. However, through the proceedings in the GMM, which was held on the 13th of June 2013, the lead co-lawyers confirmed that the requested time will be reduced to one and a half days. The accused, Nunchi's defense, did not have the intention to present any key documents by requested one day in order to respond to the documents presented by other parties. As for Kiev's upon defense, they raise that that kind of hearing is a violation to Kiev's upon, as the defense is not allowed to object or to discuss on the documents raised by other parties. For that reason, the Chamber shall hold for the hearings on the admissibility of documents as well as the weight of the evidence presented in the previous hearings. This is in reference to document E263. Also, as outlined in the memorandum of the hearing schedule for key documents hearing, that is document E288-1-1, À savoir e 281 sent informally to all parties on Monday last week, which was placed also in the case file on the 21st. Sur le 21. The chamber already confirmed that La a et déjà the hearing on document hearings is not a hearing for the discussion or debate on the admissibility of documents which have been presented through the evidentiary hearings, but it is a hearing which allows parties to present key documents, both 
excapatory and incapatory in order to assess the chamber to assess the probative value when the chamber will weight the evidence at the conclusion of the evidentiary proceedings. In addition, this kind of hearing outre, will also assist the public to understand better le public, the categories of documents presented documents in this case, and that is due to the nature of the huge and complicated Et case file. De la However, complexité the defense for Kiel Sampon and the Cela accused himself failed to take the opportunity granted by the chamber to make an observation or to comment on the various documents presented by the parties, parties, in particular by the co-prosecutors. However, for the interest Toutefois, of justice, the chamber will grant the accused and Kirsten Pond and his defense to make observations or comments on documents presented by other parties par les during the key document ce, hearings au cours des if the accused or the defense intends to do so. Intention de se faire. For that reason, the Chamber will allocate Par time conséquent. for key document presentations and time allocation for du observation of comments pour la as follows. Des documents clés et pour les observations. On la the Chambre le temps joint criminal enterprise policy, comme suit. Concernant the co-prosecutors will be allocated two days, de and on the role of the accused, Concernant one day. So three days journée. in total for the prosecution. As for the lead co-lawyers, on the joint criminal enterprise policy and the role of the accused, one and a half day in total. Un total d'une journée et demie sera accordé. And for Nunchi's defense on the joint criminal enterprise, is half a day, and on the role of the accused is half a day. So the total is one day for Nunchi's defense. As for Kyo Sampon's defense, regarding on all documents that they could request to make observations or comment, is allocated half a day. La défense de Kyosampan dispose d'une demi-journée. The floor is now given to the prosecution to present the key documents with deems of interest to assist the chamber to assess the evidence on the policy of joint criminal enterprise en and after on the role of the accused. You may proceed. Je vous en prie. Mr. President, Your Honours, good morning. Uh, good morning to my fellow counsel. In this document presentation on the alleged joint criminal enterprise relating to the forced movements of the civilian population, first and second phase, the co-prosecutors will present documentation it considers to be of particular relevance to assist the trial chamber in determining the truth. The documents deal with the following issues and events. Number one, core party lines of the CPK which predated the forced movements of the civilian population. These party lines are documented in official CPK publications, such as the CPK statute and issues of the revolutionary flag. Central to CPK ideology, was the need to dry up La the enemy and drain the civilian population. Number two, examples of the policy of draining the population and the forced movement of the civilian population by reference to events in 
Croce, Kampong Cham, Siem Reap, Siem Reap, the Eastern Zone, et la zone est. the Southwest Zone, la zone sud -ouest. and in particular, et en particular the events in Udong les in March 1974. Number three. Comments made by Q. Sampong in a speech delivered in North Korea on the 5th of April 1974, within weeks after the attack on Udong, as well as official documentation issued at the same time, also commenting on the attack of Udong. Number four. The movements of Q. Sampan and Yen Siri as the main representatives in a Grunk Funk delegation during an official tour of Vietnam, China, and other countries in Europe and Africa during the period from the 27th of March 1974, returning to Peking in late May 1974. Mai 1974 date de à Number five. The decision to evacuate decision the population of Phnom Penh, population de Phnom Penh including evidence of a meeting between Pol Pot and Ian Suri in June 1974, and comments by Nguyen Chia as to the nature of the decision-making process and the use of democratic centralism. Le recours au centralisme Number six. Sixième. Examples by way of telegrams des of the movement and execution of civilians in late 1974. Number seven. Septième. A United States government report dated the 17th of March 1975 prepared for potential use with the United States Congress and media citing particular incidents against the civilian population by the communists in the lead up to the evacuation. Number eight, the contents of speeches delivered by Q. in the lead up to the first forced movement and documents showing where he was and who he was with. And number nine, statements by Yin Siri to foreign journalists providing purported justification for the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Can I start then, please, Mr. President, Monsieur by reference to document number E3-214. This is the CPK statute, and I will be referring to one article. The English ERN is 0018-4033. The Khmer 0053-01. Zero eight cinq trois zero un stroke nine et neuf French et en français, double zero, zero two nine two nine two three vingt trois. This is Article four article of the statute. Uh, the heading statute. is party le discipline, and suivant, this will come up, I hope, on the screen. Parti. As I start speaking, je vais faire apparaître cela avec Article 4, number 1. Article In order to maintain and to consolidate internal party solidarity and unity to be always good, the party has designated party and raised the principle of respect for party discipline and organization. Party discipline is very firm, but stands on the principle of awareness of each individual party member. Each party member, regardless of position, must absolutely respect and follow party discipline. 
respecting party discipline and organization is respecting the party political line, party ideological principles and stances, party organizational stances and party statutes. Number two, any party member or any party echelon opposing the party political line, party ideological stances, party organizational stances, and party statutes causes fractures in internal party solidarity and unity and creates groups to carry out activities to destroy the party. The next document is E3-16, this is an extract from a book by Q. Sampong entitled, and I quote, Considerations on the History of Cambodia from the Early Stage to the Period of Democratic Kampuchea, close quote. The extract I wish to refer to is English ERN 00498 Khmer 0038-0267, and French 0064-3834. And here under a heading of D, the new line of the new D, party, Q. Sampon stated party, as follows, and I quote, this line specified that the exploiting classes were the primary enemy of the Cambodian Revolution and the tools of the American imperialists. Thus, the Cambodian people had to smash the feudalist regime, whether by peaceful methods or by other methods. The next document is from E3-18. This is a book by Q. Sampon entitled Cambodia's Recent History and the Reasons Behind the Decisions I Made. The ERNs are 00103778, and I hope the document can come up on the screen this time. Khmer 00103873, and French 00595485. The general heading of the extract is the accelerated communization of the country, and the particular extract reads as follows. The Khmer Rouge victory on April the 17th, 1975, strengthened Pol Pot's conviction that the only way to ensure the movement's survival and thus for Cambodia to face the Vietnamese threat, a threat he believed to be even more dangerous after reunification, was the forced collectivization of the country. Staying on that document, if I may, Toujours but some different ERN numbers. Dans ce document, mais avec une autre page. English ERN 00103776, Khmer 00103870, French 00595479, through to 80. So again, still on this book by Q. Sampong, and I quote, 
since then, I learned from various internal party documents and from the stories of various zone or region leaders that the daily social conflicts in the cities as well as in the countryside, though seemingly minor, were actually breeding grounds for the CPK to train leaders to work in various types of mass organizations. But the movement soon revealed itself to be far more vulnerable in the cities than in the countryside. According to the documents, quote, the enemy's repression machine is more sophisticated there, where workers are often tarnished by capitalism, whereas the countryside is wider and more protected from it." Close quote. In the countryside, aside from the developing peasant associations, the first self-defense units were taking place. Young peasants practiced handling ropes, first to tie oxen, and using kramas, bamboo canes, etc. Basically, whatever was available that could be used as weapons to fight the most tyrannical commune chiefs, their deputies, forestry and fishery guards, or anyone who might try to take over their land or the land of their families. In some regions, the local authorities secret agents who were caught spying on important party meetings were sometimes tied up and physically eliminated. The next document is E3-5. This is an extract from the Revolutionary Flag. Issue 8, du eight August 1975. The extract is English 00401492. The Khmer is 00063329. And the French 00538966. And this is on the subject of secret defense units. And I quote, secret defense units were organized at every location among the people, the peasants, the workers, the laborers, and the students that were armed, whether they bore arms legally or illegally, were the secret defense unit of the party. What mission did they have? The mission of the secret defense unit was to defend the revolution's base areas, to defend the revolution's people, to defend the cadres moving around working, and to defend the assemblies and the various meetings. And, in tandem with this, to covertly smash the enemy, the government agents and the various reactionaries, in order to defend the party, the revolution, and the people." Close quote. The next document is E3-25. This is another CPK publication. This is the revolutionary flag 
Special issue, December 1976, stroke January 1977. The extract is English ERN 0049-1424, Khmer 0006303. Slash four zero and French zero zero five zero four zero four nine slash five zero and the heading for this extract is and I start quoting attacking the enemy politically taking just one example. Fighting to seize the people. Throughout the world, they never fought to seize the people. Our line was to fight to seize the people. One, we took him. Two, we took them. One hundred, we took them. One thousand. We took them, and so on, until we fought for and seized the people from Phnom Penh too. The line of drying up the people from the enemy was very correct. This never happened in the world. When the enemy has the people, the enemy has a military and an economy. When the enemy has no people, the enemy has no military and no economic strength. Our reasoning is correct. Thus, our line is very correct. We fight to seize the people at every location. An example, the fighting in Banam in 1973. We took everyone in Banam town, expelling the ethnic Vietnamese, the ethnic Chinese, the military, Les soldats, the police, et les policiers. we took everyone, nous avons pris drying tout le monde, up the people nous avons from the enemy. Le peuple de and further down the page, an example, de Plus bas, sur we page, liberated Udong exemple, in 1974. Udong en 74. We pulled out nous all the people. Tout le peuple. This is a very important strategic line. Control the people and seize the people. Mr. President, I just want to check why this page and other pages have not come up on the screen. Can, you, can I please just have one moment? The next document is E3 slash 1108. This is an official CPK report with a signature at the end of the document. And it's a report regarding a meeting to celebrate the start of resistance in Amlien. So this was a meeting which took place on the 30th of September 1974. The front page is English ERN 005-83812. That is Khmer 0038-3754-5 stroke five, and French 
The report is entitled Le rapport apporté. Subject. The meeting Objet. to celebrate the enemy's 23rd anniversary meeting and Hu Yun's speech et le discours de Yun. on the 30th of September 1974, le a commission of the Communist Party of Kampuchea's Central Committee du comité central du Parti gathered du to celebrate the anniversary of the 23-year-old history of resistance in Amlien district. De résistance dans le district de the Amlien. event was held with the participation of many people in the Khmer Rouge's framework, de beaucoup de gens, party members and Khmer People's Rouge, National Liberation Armed Forces FPLK from different places who all dressed in black. Qui étaient tous habillés en noir. On the same English ERN page, Toujours but Khmer MRN, moving forward one en page en to 00383755, still on the same French page, en français, du document we code see that the attendees of this meeting included Chuchet, described as the chief Nous of the southwest zone, de la zone sud -ouest. at number three in a list, Tamok, Tamok, commander of the southwest zone, commandant de l'armée de la zone sud-ouest, and then moving on a number of pages to Khmer page 00383756, English 00583821, and French 00788352. We deux. see that the other persons in attendance at this meeting were at number 47, Salot Saar, Secretary of the Party. Du parti. Number 48, Hu Yun, Hu Yun, Ministry of Interior, in Ministère charge of organizing rural and cooperatives. At number 50, Tiv Ol the Deputy Secretary of State Secretary of the Ministry of, of Propaganda. At number three, Khoi Tuun, the Deputy Secretary of State of the Ministry of Finance. And at number 54, Comrade Ken, or Noor Puisara, also a member. Moving on to the next Khmer page, which is 00383757, French 00788353, and English 00583822. This meeting is described in the following terms, and I quote. At the beginning, Chu Che announced the opening of the program. The sound of microphone emitted, ordering all comrades to roll down their sleeves, fasten the collar buttons, take off the hats, and prepare to salute the party's flag. Audience and military cadres saluted quietly. The party's anthem emitted, Blue curtain opened slowly, and blood-red cloth, with its size of about four meters, appeared. On the cloth, there was an emblem of a sickle and a hammer right in the center of the red cloth, which is the same as that of the Soviet's emblem. They clenched their fists and saluted silently. After that, Hu Yun went on the stage and delivered a very long speech of three hours, during which he talked about the Communist Party of Kampuchea's 23-year-old history of resistance, and he gave advice to high-profile military cadres. Moving on now to some extracts from Hu Yuan's speech, can I please turn to Khmer page 00383759, French 
and English 0058-3823-23. This is who Yuen talking about the history of the party's organization, and I quote. For that reason, the party's organization did not participate under the ruling of the feudalists and royalists. The organization has organized its cadres into three groups. One group was sent to study in North Vietnam. Another group was sent to do political movements in the city. And the last group was sent to establish political movement in rural areas. Another extract from the speech, Khmer page 00383763, French 00788356, and English 00583824. And I quote, Je cite. later on, the organization implemented a plan a mis un, en oeuvre, according un plan. to the slogan of Sous the, the first slogan. phase, attack Première the phase, countryside, attaquer la campagne. surround the city, which was the second phase. phase in the implementation of the plan, achieved considerable success. La mise en de ce plan Hence, a été une in 1971, et donc, the organization decided to oblige all of its military cadres to leave Vietnam's military units by shifting to self-reliance. And the final extract from this speech of Hu Yun, Khmer ERN 00383766, French 00788357, English 00583826. And these are instructions from Hu Yun to the military cadre. cadre and I quote, Je cite, From now on, the military cadres must liberate the whole country. However, please bear in mind that before we attack the outside enemy, we must attack the enemy inside each of us first. Comrades must make a clear distinction between friends and enemy and must adopt the following stance. One, labor stance. Two, political stance. Three, solidarity stance. Four, ideological stance, and five organizational stance. The next document is E3-118. This is an extract from Fibis for April 1975. The heading of the extract is Q Sampan, 21st April, Q Sampan, 21 victory April, message on Phnom Penh radio. And this was a broadcast made by Q Sampan on the 21st of April. 1975, and the broadcast has a further heading, Congratulatory Statement by RGNUC, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defense, and CPN LAF Commander-in-Chief, Q. Sampan, to CP 
NLAF units and Cambodian people live or recorded. En direct ou enregistré. And the extract on English 00166994, Khmer 00846160 through 61, and French 00845854355 is as follows. And I quote. Khmer ERN again is zero zero eight four eight four six one six one six zero six one six zero six one and I quote. Je cite. This is our nation's and people's greatest. Historic victory. Our entire nation, people, and CPNLAF, as well as people throughout the world, and in all friendly countries far and near, warmly welcome this great victory. It has opened the most brilliant and righteous path which led the Cambodian people and the CPNLAF in waging the powerful people's war to fight the enemy on every field, military, political, economic, and in its efforts to drain the population from controlled areas, successively smashing all enemy maneuvers relentlessly attacking ennemis, and draining the enemy of its military, de political, de economic and forces, financial strength, food and rice, until it reached a point from which it could not recover. Finally, the enemy died in agony. The next document is E3-22. This is an extract from Cambodian Communism by Stephen Heder. The ERNs are as follows. English And the Khmer is 0084610. Can I say for the person who's uh, behind me, I am not certain of that Khmer ERN, as I believe that this book had not been translated into Khmer. But in any event, it's Cambodian Communism by Steve it's talking about events in 1970 through to 1971, and he states as follows. Already in late 1970, early 1971, the Vietnamese Workers' Party, while it remained predominant, and the CPK as it took control, increasingly relied on the pressure of their armed power to maintain and extend their control, where the Vietnamese military operated in overwhelming force, it sealed off the liberated zones from the rest of the country, enforcing a ban on population movements between them, a policy that the Cambodian communists inherited and reinforced. Many rural folk felt trapped in the liberated zones, reluctantly acquiescing to communist control, whether Vietnamese or Cambodian. They fled when they could from a revolution that enjoyed even less support, sorry, less popular support than in southern Vietnam. And on the next page, which is English ERN 0039383, 
3-2, there is the following extract, and I quote, As the CPK became more Alors politically autonomous plus of plus the Vietnamese Workers' Party in 1971-1972, much of the population remained cynical, distrustful, and fearful of a revolution that maintained its position through threats and executions. As the CPK expelled Vietnamese armed forces in 1972-1973, it replaced their military domination with increasingly extreme coercion to ensure peasant compliance with its demands. The CPK became even more violent and repressive after mid-1973, when it radicalized its policies, insisting on the formulation of agricultural cooperatives in the zones under its control, curtailing the practice of religion, imposing even stricter prohibitions on villagers' movements and mobilizing the population for attacks on Phnom Penh. And later in this extract, I quote, the CPK never convinced the majority that the revolution it was pushing forward was in their interests. Coercion, force and threats maintained only the semblance of mass support and of the popular success of the National People's Democratic Revolution. The next document is E3-597. This is an extract from Le Monde entitled Interview with a Cambodian Revolutionary. The French ERN is 007-222-45 through 46. Khmer 007-44036 and English 00000-3963-2. And the extracts are as follows. The article starts with these words. In Peking, our special correspondent, Claude Julien, recently met with Yeng Siri, one of the historical leaders of the Cambodian Revolution. He, who soon will return to the underground, reveals here for the first time to a foreign journalist his views on the evolution of his country. And the date of this uh, report is the 15th of January, 1972. Ying Siri was asked, how practically do you organize the power of the people? And Ying Siri gave this reply. In the vast liberated zone, we have applied the FOMP program. It rests on the principle by which the people are the source of all power. At all admi administrative levels, from the hamlets, the villages, and the districts, and the provinces, committees are functioning as the state apparatus. Each committee is composed of three, five, or seven members according to the importance of its echelon. Each member is assigned one or more specific duties, political, military, security, economic, cultural, social affairs, etc. And then later in the article on Khmer page 007-44039, Zero 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 three nine six four and one page on again in the French document there is this extract. Thus our popular armed forces have rapidly organized and developed themselves on all these levels and are composed of three principal forces. The guerrilla units, the regional forces, and the regular forces. 
all placed under the command of a national military committee and its staff. At the level of each military region, there is a military committee and a regional staff. The next document, Mr. Prochette President, is E3-37. This is the record of the questions and answers which took place before the co-investigating judges and Q. Sampong on the 15th of December 2007. And the extract to which I seek to make reference is on English page 0015756, Khmer page 0015667378, and French 0015668484. Sampon was asked this question by Marcel Le Monde, Le juge the co-investigating judge, juge and I quote, a posé cette question à Sampon, et je cite, Did you agree with the content of those contenu? speeches you made? Des discours que vous avez prononcés. And if you disagreed with the content, et could sinon, you give us an example of such disagreement? And the answer was, Réponse. Generally, I agreed with the content. J'étais d'accord. The next document is E3-637. This is a statement made by Q. Sampon, Hu Yun, and Hu Ni in January 1973. It also talks about events 9th of September 1972. On aussi the official start of the document is on English 0074-09. Sorry. 0974-09. I'm going to repeat that ERN. 00, um, 00. 740931 in English, 0044233 in Khmer, and in French, 00752174. So again, document number E3-637. The document is headed le statement de by and then lists Q Sampon, Hu Yun, and Hu Nim. Going into the statement itself, at page à English 00740938, Khmer 00442332, stroke 3, and French 0075. 2174. There is the following quotation. All in all, up to mid January 1973, the Kampuchean People's Liberation Armed Forces and our people have obtained great victory. We have smashed a total of 10,245 heads of the enemies and liberated dozens of bases. Dizaines de bases. Attached to the general report is a special report, and we en find the général, front page of the special report at English ERN 0074-09394. That is French 00752175 and Khmer 0044233. And the special report has this title. I quote Special report. 
I accompanied Mr. Deputy Prime Minister Q. Sampon to visit the provinces of Prévéhir, Kampongpong, and Siem Reap. Close quote. And then the document itself starts with these words. From the 25th of November 1972 through to the 15th of December 1972, I accompanied Mr. Deputy Prime Minister Q. Sampon to visit Priya Vihir, Kampong Pom, and Siem Reap. And still in the body of this special report, we see at page English ERN. 0074943 Khmer 0042233637 and French 0075217867 the following extract and this is the person who's reporting on the visit with Q Sampon to these areas our people know who are friends and enemies very clearly, and they hold absolute grudge against the enemy. Everywhere we went, people, including men, women, children, and elderly people, warmly welcomed Deputy Prime Minister Hugh Sampon with great joy. Before leaving for a new place, people just came to shake hands with Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, with love and miss, and requested him to visit their place again. People wished Mr. Deputy Prime Minister and threw him the front and the royal government of National Union of Kampuchea great victory and splendid strength. Mr. President, I'm moving on now to a number of extracts from a book by Ben Kean entitled How Pol Pot Came to Power. That book is E3-1815. And the next six themes come directly from that book. Can I start, please, with E3-1815? The English ERN is 00487488. The Khmer is 00104868. Can I explain for Judge Laverne and my learned colleagues who are listening in French that there is a partial translation of this book in French, but it does not include translations of the extracts that I'm about to quote, que je suis de and I have therefore asked for these extracts to be now translated into que French, ces soient but it en will français. be the Khmer version coming Mais up on the screen ce, de, and the English version being quoted. La version Khmer à l'écran, et je citerai la version en anglais. The first extract comes under a title, Le The Democratic Revolution, 1973-1975. And the next heading is The Class Enemy. And the following is stated. Je cite. On the 20th of May 1973, as the US bombardment approached its peak, the CPK Center launched a cooperativization program which initially involved organizing peasants into groups of 10, 20, or 30 families. This had already occurred in many areas, but now land was to be collectivized as well, and the produce of the peasants' labor was to be confiscated by the authorities. In some cases, 
regulations concerning the destruction of religion and family life and enforced communal eating were also implemented. This was termed the democratic revolution and the reference for that extract refers to the revolutionary flag of the 8th of August 1975, which is document number E3-5. Ben Kiernan then referred an interview that Steve Hedder had with a CPK member on the 11th and 12th of March 1980. And there is then this quote still within this extract on E3 slash 1815. It talks about an explanation from this soldier and back to the revolutionary flag and the, 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 the following words appear. In the words of the CPK document, we must construct a clean, honest, society. What this meant was to be explained in an August 1975 issue of the internal CPK magazine, Tung Padevat, Revolutionary Flags. Its author expressed ambivalence concerning the pre-1973 situation. Quote, there was progress on the one hand and the same old society on the other. The next extract from E31815 is to do with the events in Krache in 1973. The English ERN is 00487489. The Khmer ERN is 00104869. The author refers at the top of the extract with the May 1973 establishment of the cooperatives and then in relation to Krachi states as follows. And I quote, until 1973, we are told, and this is referencing the revolutionary flag E3-5, Karachi Township showed the same signs as in the old society. Honda motorcycles were speeding up and down the streets like before while our ragged guerrillas walked in the dust. This showed that they were still the masters. They distributed things to the people, mostly commercial equipment. If we had followed that road, we could have gone nowhere. So the party centre had to ensure that the state controlled everything. Krache was evacuated. There was to be no more trading, mortgaging, labor exchanging, or buying on credit. A state monopoly was decreed over rice, salt, fuel, cloth, and petrol. Without petrol, private owners of trucks, boats and tractors disappeared. The CPK, CPK state took over their equipment. The next extract, still on the same document, is dealing with events in Kampong Cham in 1973. Under a heading the northern zone, the following ERN pages are relevant. English 00487491 and Khmer 00104870. The author states, and I quote, after the bombing 
had been brought to a halt in August 1973. The soldier from Region 31, and I interject here to explain that that soldier is Mamlon, I spell M-A-M-L-O-N, he was a sub-district cadre in Region 31, and he was interviewed by Ben Kiernan in Kreng Liev. I'll spell that K-R-A-I-N-G-L-E-A-V on the 3rd of September 1980. So to carry on, the soldier from Region 31 returned with his unit to Kampong Tom to find that while they had been in Siem Reap, the population movement into the countryside had reversed. 50,000 peasants had now fled into Kampong Tom town. Quote, and this is the quote from the soldier. The countryside was deserted, the villages empty. Close quote. The soldier recalls. This was not just because of the US bombardment of the countryside, which had stopped, or because of aggressive Lon Nol army patrolling, which had resumed. It was also because the CPK zone military commander, K. Polk, had fully implemented the democratic revolution in region 31. The soldier, and this is still Mam Lon, continues, quote, in the Kampong Tom region, the organization was led by very severe men. Their discipline was terrible. There were many executions. Buddha statues were destroyed and pagodas secularized. Youths forced to work very hard, especially when the villages had been reorganized and rebuilt. The organization had not allowed the construction of individual houses. There were camps for women, children, young women, and young men. Meals were eaten communally, and rations consisted only of rice soup without meat. Children were forbidden to respect their parents, monks to pray, and husbands to live with their wives. That letter extract is taken from a book, and pre please everyone forgive my appalling French, it's from an author called Debre, and the book is called Cambodge, La Révolution de la Forêt, from 1976. I'm still continuing with the extract from E3185 about 1973 in the Northern Zone. In September 1973, CPK troops from Region 31 seized half of Kampong Cham city and penetrated to within 100 meters of the governor's residence. When they withdrew, they took 15,000 townspeople into the countryside with them. And that statement is referenced by footnote 318 to a book by William Shawcross entitled Sideshow, Kissinger, Nixon and the Destruction of Cambodia written in 1979. Still dealing with events in the Northern Zone, and still in 1973, but moving to English ERN 00487493, Khmer 00104871. There is then this extract from Mr. Kiernan. And I quote, 
je cite. Changes were also afoot in Siem Reap. Liev Kiel Moni, and I'm going to spell that. L E A V K E O M O N I. The Hanoi trained veteran Isarak, who had taken charge of Srai Snam district in 1970, died of natural causes, it seems, in late 1972. Before Moni's death, local communists had carried out their first executions of Lon Nol soldiers, previously captured and released, who had rejoined Lon Nol's army. The communists also began burning houses and forcibly regrouping the population away from the front lines. But according to the Lon Nol district chief, and that is a reference to a man called Ching Nam Yin, and I'm going to spell that, C-H-H-I-N-G, N A M Y E A N G. And that was a man who was interviewed by Ben Kiernan in Rouen on the 11th of October 1979. So, according to the local Lon Nol district chief speaking in 1979. They rarely killed civilians. Close quote. Moni's death and the increased bombing, however, were followed in 1973 by large scale executions of all captured Lon Nol troops and militia and also of traders, the district chief reports. And again, a quote from the district chief, Ching Nam Yi. The communists now began to evacuate whole villages with livestock and compile records about everyone. Rich people had to do forced labor. And moving, if I may, to the southwest zone, Ensuite, still on the Kiernan book, still E3 slash 1815. The English ERN is 00487495. The Khmer ERN 00107373. So this is now Mr. Kiernan writing about the South Western Zone, and I quote. But it was the South Western Zone that saw the greatest convulsions in the revolutionary ranks. 1973 was the year that the Mok Putrin tendency, closely allied with the CPK center, Establish its supremacy over Placit, Chuchet, and their more moderate colleagues, and completely eclipsed the Hanoi tri trained Khmers throughout the zone. The first high ranking victim was apparently Sangha Huan, and I'm going to spell that S A N G A H A H O E U N, an Isarak veteran and a member of the Zone Committee, a former monk from Kompong Spu, and that is a reference to. Chun Samat, C H U N, Samat S A M A T H, interviewed by Ben Kiernan in Kong Pisai on the 17th of September 1980. So, a former monk from Kompong Spu, Region 33, who joined the Communists in 1970, recalls. So this is a quote from that. 
In 1971-72, the revolution was good. The people were not worried at all. Sang Ah Hoon was friendly with the Vietnamese and never had any trouble with them. And the people liked Sang Ah Hoon a lot because he sponsored theater performances with national traditional music. Also, there were plenty of Lon Nol soldiers and intellectuals who came to the liberated zones from Phnom Penh and the province capitals to join the revolution. Sangahun and Chuchet re-educated and taught these people. I saw this. They did not kill them. But Mok did kill such people, and he became angry with what the other two were doing. There was a power struggle. In 1973, the killings began. At first, there were transfers of sub-district and region cadres. Then, Chuchet and his followers fought with Mok's followers at a combined zone and region meeting in our sub-district, which I helped organize. The fight broke out over politics and theory in the middle of the meeting. Chuchet then left for the West to discuss the question of the executions of the Lon Nol soldiers. Puk Chai, and I'm going to spell that, P-H-O-U-K-C-H-H-A-Y, went with him. I was told that they were transferred to Kokong. Two weeks later, Sang Ah Hoon was arrested by Mok's troops. At first, they took him under guard to our village for a day and a night, and then to the center or zone headquarters. Five trucks came to take his followers to Kompong Chnam. So that deals with Mr. Kiernan relying on that particular person for that source. Mr. Kiernan then goes on and he mentions in the next words Kenneth Quinn. Kenneth Quinn was an American and this is a reference to one of his publications at footnote. Uh, 335, and that's a reference to Quinn, Political Change in Wartime, the Khmer Krahom Revolution in Southern Cambodia, and that was printed in the Naval War College Review in the spring of 1976. So Mr. Kiernan carries on, stating as follows. Kenneth Quinn reports that in 1973, Chuchet had his authority and influence reduced because of his pro-North Vietnam army and pro-Sihanouk stands, and in fact was even ambushed and slightly wounded by the CPK forces once in late November while traveling with some North Vietnamese army soldiers on Route 16. For the next sentence, Mr. Kiernan relies on his interview with the then named Nu Muk, who gave evidence last week. And that was the interview that we heard of. So carrying on with the quote from Mr. Kiernan. After his arrival in Kampong Chang, Chu Chet continued to stress solidarity with the Vietnamese at political meetings, reference Nu Mr. Kiernan then 
speaks about a Yuvakok member in Upper Kompong Tralak district, and that's a reference to a man called Chung Pao, and I'm going to spell that, C-H-H-U-O-N-G-K-A-U, and that was an interview with Ben Kiernan in Kampong Chnang on the 1st of September 1980. 1st September 1980, entretien with Ben Kiernan. A Yuvakok member in the upper Kampong Tralak district there claims that because Chet was an intellectual, he was in constant conflict with a forest revolutionary like Mok. Further, despite their own experience at Sihinuk's hands in the 1960s, Chet and others like Puk Choi and Khoi Tuan appreciated Sihinuk's appeal, even if to them he was only a figurehead. The Yuvakot member, in fact, says that, I quote, the people believed in Sihinuk more than in the revolution. Problems arose when the party began to criticize the prince openly, and Mok's response was to impose his authority by force. And then going back to quote Chung Kao. Mok was cruel ever since 1971-72. Unlike Chu Chet and Puk Choi, he was fierce, a killer. The killings began in 1973 as the bombs were falling. Also, some prisoners of war were executed and others put in re-education centers. 1973 was the year the U.S. began bombing the area with B-52s, so they had to fight back hard. The killings were in accordance with regulations. This was called strengthening the democratic revolution. No one dared resist the changes. I know for sure from friends who worked directly with Mok that he was the one who ordered the killings. They took place in the forest. Mok had the power but he did not have much understanding of politics. Puk Choi was educating him, but there was conflict between the forest resistance, people like Mok, and the internal urban resistance, people like Puk Choi, who had recently arrived since 1970. And all those references I've just made are with the footnote referring to Chung Kao. Still on the southwestern zone, but moving to English ERN 00487497. And I hope that's one page on in the Khmer. Que dans la Khmer une page plus bas. This is Ben Kiernan now talking about Quinn. Ben Kiernan parle de Quinn. I've already mentioned Kenneth Quinn and one Je of his papers, cité Kenneth Quinn but I'm about to be referring to another document by Quinn. Je fais citer and un autre document this document Quinn is entitled qui est intitulé comme suit, The Khmer Krahom Program to create a communist society in southern Cambodia. And this is an airgram from the United States Consul, Khan Tol, C-A-N-T-H-O, to the Department of State on the 20th of February 1974. Quinn, 
who was monitoring developments in Green. the southwestern zone from across the Observe Vietnamese border, reports that local elections were no longer held in the areas newly seized from the Long Nol government from 1973. He says, village chiefs and sub-district officials were appointed by CPK district committees. The number of Buddhist festivals was reduced to two each year, and Cham Muslim ones were totally forbidden. In Kampot in July, so this is a reference to Kampot in July 1973, each Buddhist Wat was ordered to supply 10 months to serve as infantrymen in the army's depleted ranks. Soon afterwards, in both Takao and Kampot, regions 13 and 35, all but four monks in each Wat were drafted, which Quinn notes decimated the monk population there. At the same time, local towns such as Ang Tasson and Kampong Tra were evacuated. And in rural areas, a large-scale relocation process was implemented. 20,000 people were moved out of their villages in two districts of Kampot alone. Quinn continues. So this is a quote from Kenneth Quinn. In parts of Takao and Kampot, the Khmer communists brought in a large number of new cadres to implement this program, having lost faith in many older cadres whom they considered to be either pro-North Vietnamese or not tough enough to carry it out." Close quote. Popular unrest was also mounting. Quinn cites three incidents in Kampot, Region 35, of popular and military reaction to attempts by CPK cadres to forcibly relocate the population and confiscate rice harvests. Still relying on Quinn, Mr. Kiernan at English page ERN 00487499. I'm afraid I don't have the Khmer page. English, I repeat, 00487499. In early 1973, when the Khmer Krahom, the official CPK forces, entered the new harsh phase of their campaign in which all rules were strictly enforced and unpopular programs carried out with stiff penalties for non-compliance, Almost all popular feeling turned against them. Mr. Kiernan then goes on to select quotations from an interview that he had with a man called Tan Hao, T-A-N, H-A-O, and that took place in Alençon on the 4th of October 1979. So he's talking, Mr. Kiernan, now about Kok Kong province, and he's referencing his interview with Tan Hao. Region 11 in Kok Kong province 
dans la province de Kong. Kong the ethnic Chinese woman la who was living there, de Tan Hao, qui habitait là, Tan Hao, recounts what happened to those she calls the free Khmer Rouge. Le... In late 1973, the Vietnamese were told to go back to their country, and we saw no more of them. In October or November, the ethnic Chinese revolutionary cadres all disappeared as well, and the Chinese force was dissolved. Only the Khmer force remained. In 1974, hard times began. Zone and regional armed forces from Kampong Sela arrived in Kokong. They included many women. A person called Prakcha was arrested and taken away. They said he was going to study, but actually they killed him. Everybody in Kokong was afraid Tout le monde a because their peur. leader had been taken away. Car Prasit, P-R-A-S-I-T-H, disappeared about the same time. It got harder and harder. The Khmer Rouge began killing people. People who did anything wrong were taken away and shot. In 1974, they recruited every youth 16 years old or more into the army. Some who didn't go were killed. Ceux qui n'y sont pas allés ont été tués. The next extract. We're now moving on to Mr. Kiernan writing about the Eastern Zone. Citer ce qu'écrit Yann Kiernan à propos de la zone ERN. RN. En anglais. 0048705606. Khmer 0010048808081. It was only in mid 1974 that the Eastern Zone began to exhibit some of the patterns est, that had been evident elsewhere for several years. In August, 71 Hanoi-trained Khmer cadres from all over the zone were assembled for a study course in Region 21, Kampong Cham. One of them, Hem Samin, H-E-M, S-A-M-I-N, and this references an interview that Mr. Kiernan had with Hem Samin in Phnom Penh on the 28th of September 1980. One of them, Hem Samin, recalls that they were lectured by Puong, P-H-U-O-N-G, and Region Secretary Chan. Huang then informed the group that they were now in detention and had to stay where we were in order to be self-reliant until the organization came up with a solution so that we could go back to work. Ten of the prisoners soon disappeared, allegedly taken to carry out duties somewhere else. The other 61, including Samin, were put to work in the fields under close supervision. They enjoyed some freedom of movement, however, and Puong's statement suggests that the Eastern Zone executives did not wish to rule out a future role for them. By contrast, only six of their colleagues were still alive in jail in the southwest. Hundreds of others had been executed since 1971. That final phrase that I've read out is sourced by an interview that Ben Kiernan had with one of the six Khmer Hanoi. His name was Sok Kem, S-O-K-H-E-M. 
K H E M, and that interview took place in Kampot on the 27th of August 1980. Mr. Kiernan, in giving a conclusion on the Eastern Zone, on English page 00487510, the Khmer page may be, but I'm not entirely sure, 00104881. Mr. Kiernan states as follows. The evacuation of towns like Kratje, Kampong Trap, Kampong Tra, Ang Tasom, Ang Tasom, and Kampong Kdai, Kdai in 1973, en 1973 was not an abnormal measure at the height of the bombardment. It also provided the CPK with a precedent Ces ont to push further ahead, to take advantage of this loin, momentum de de and mobilize the population for more communism, population even after the bombardment had stopped. De guerre, même après the democratic de revolution was la both a product of and a capitalization upon un produit the US aerial une cooptation war. de la guerre aérienne américaine. The President. Thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. We believe that it is now Merci. appropriate Merci, moment Procureur. already for the Le adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn for 20 minutes. Nous donc le débat pendant 20 minutes. Some